The village of Long Compton has existed for more than a thousand years. Nestled in a shallow Cotswold Valley alongside the confluence of two streams, which together go on to feed the River Stour. The village, like so many others, has spent most of its existence owned by kings, earls, lords and marquises. That is, until around a hundred years ago, when the main landowner, the Marquis of Northampton, sold off his property at auction in 1919. For the first time since before Doomsday, Long Compton was owned by the people who lived and worked in the village. The auction documents provide a fascinating picture of the village in the 1920s. Now, 100 years later, the children of Long Compton's Acorns Primary School decided to look at the village again, to find out what it meant to be a villager in the 2020s. This film is the record of what they discovered, based on interviews with today's villagers carried out by Acorn's children, using questions they had devised themselves. Hobday and I've lived in the village for 30 years. I moved to Long Compton in September 2018, so coming up for two years now. Okay. Five years next month. 35 years. 35, 35 years, yeah. yes. Last April the 2nd. About uh, six and a half years. Uh, I've been in Long Compton for about 20 years now. Um, my family have lived in Long Compton for a while and I was born in Warwick and then we moved here. So I've been here for all my life. Did your family originally come from Long Compton? Pretty much, yeah. My mum lived here um, and my dad was from around the area as well, so we've lived here for a long time. No, they are from South Wales via, well, originally Lancashire and London. They moved to South Wales and then I was in London for a while and didn't want to move all the way back to Wales so kind of found somewhere halfway between friends in London and family in South Wales. No, no, it was quite a, a random thing that happened. Um, no, my family, I was born in the North East in Darlington and my family lived in Herefordshire so it's uh, nothing to do with my family that I came here. Why Long Compton then? Um, Serendipity really. I had a job in Shipston and it was at a time when property was not selling very quickly and they sent me down to look at a cottage here that was being sold by Western Park Estate and I just liked it immediately. It was the house that brought me here really. Um, not originally. My um, dad was from uh, Redditch and my mum was from Birmingham. Yeah. Do you know why they moved here? Um, it was through work. My dad was um, a butcher back then and um, he got a job in working in the village. Oh no, 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 no. No, we, we, we moved here because we were looking for a place to do bed and breakfast, w weren't we? Yes, but we had lived in um, Oxfordshire for quite some time before that. So it wasn't that far away from home really. Our children were at school in Woodstock um, and Oxford and so we were really looking for somewhere towards the Cotswolds from, from Oxford. I only moved here a year after I was married. I was born in London. Um, and we moved two or three times and we finished up in a village called Stonesfield near Woodstock when I was not quite eight years old. And that's where we lived until I left home. Oh, we haven't got any relatives living in Long Compton. We came here not knowing anybody. It was a completely new experience for us. We'd never, we like... we'd never even heard of Long Compton when we were house hunting. We just uh, came across it and Thought decided it... we liked it. We liked the house, so that's why we ended up here. No, I moved to Long Compton um, to run the local pub. 
How long have you been running the pub for? Uh, so it will be 16 years in October. I might be wrong about this, but 16 years um, for the landlording and staying at one pub is fairly unusual yeah. for an owner to stay Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. What is it about Long Compton that's made you stay for so long? It's really interesting because when we very first came to the village everyone said to us how long will you be here for and we said you'll have us for two or three years. That's generally what we did. We stayed somewhere for two or three years, kind of built it up and then you just kind of move on for a new experience. Um, and yeah, we just, we got through those two or three years and we just felt like our job at the Red Line wasn't done and that it still had a lot of growth in it. Um, so we just really continued um, and it was also our home and we'd, although we hadn't got this one, um, we'd got a chocolate Labrador called Coco at the time and that became her home. Um, yeah, so we just kind of grew with it and it's just in the last, only about 12 months ago, or just over 12 months ago, we actually bought a house in the village. So we no longer live at the pub, we live in the village, but we still work there. We just love it, we absolutely love it. Shall I answer yeah. that one? Um, no, we haven't got any relatives in Long Compton at all. We, um, we decided to move here when Chris retired from work. How has the village changed since you lived here? <laughs> Ooh. Well, we haven't been here an awfully long time yet, but there have definitely been um, more houses built since we've been here. Um, I think that's the Yeah, I think the traffic, thing. yeah, some of the not so good things have been, there's been an increase in traffic. And I think that's partly because people are ordering more things online. So there's more delivery vehicles coming through. Um, uh, but uh, and yes, there's definitely been a bit more building, um, and I think I sense there's more younger people in the village now, which is a good thing. Um, so yeah. yeah. Well, it's got a lot of old people like me now, and it's got. But luckily, it's got lots of new children, which is a very good thing. And there are, are a few new houses, so there's quite a lot of new people, and I like that. Um, I think the, the, the saddest part to me is the infill of the village because all the little orchards, or most of the little orchards that were there when I was small and growing up have gone, they've been built on. Um, so, uh, so that's sad. Um, so since we've been here, the new housing estate has been built with the new park um, and the park behind the shop, that's been done up and redone. Um, yeah, I think that's what's changed. Cool, yeah, that's a good one. Um, it's changed drastically from when I was a boy. Um, them days, I remember, it was original village, original Long Compton. Did you go to the village school? Yes, yeah, yeah, from start to finish. Both of you? Yeah, Jordan, yeah, 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 I was there, and um, back in the 1970s, and uh, it was a fantastic place to go. It was, I remember, it was quite full, and pretty much all the kids were from the village, and all the kids knew each other. Um, yeah, it was just a totally different place to be. Uh, now it's totally different. Um, obviously the new houses, new builds, a uh, lot of new incomers, a lot of people I grew up with uh, or, or moved away. Um, in fact, now it's totally different. In fact, I hardly know anybody here now. Just a few people here and there from who are still here. Uh, it's, yeah, it's the community's changed so much. Was school the same for you, Jordan, when you were there? Dad says everybody was from the village. Um, pretty much, I mean, I had a lot, you know, from that came from Little Compton, Barton, um, you know, Walter, Witchford. But yeah, there was a lot of, you know, still a, you know, a lot of, sort of people coming from the village to the school. And it's you know, sort of the same, like I said, I could speak for Dad really. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm from a different generation to my dad, but, uh, but yeah, the village has changed a lot because I've you know, been here sort of 25 years in my life, all my life. and. I, and I see, I see it's changed in that short amount of time. Um, then unfortunately, a lot of people have passed away and people moved away. And what I've noticed that a lot of the next generation, it's it's not really followed on. But as, as Dad said, a lot of newcomers. So the feel of the village has been a bit different. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's, it's still a, a vast difference. What it could, yeah, what it was, definitely. Are the changes for good or bad. Me personally, my thoughts are, is um, bad. Well, yes, because the, the huge majority were born and bred 
around the village, but now there are so many incomers and I know far less of the villages than I used to know. And of course, with our children being at the local school, I knew all the youngsters, but now that they're up and away, you don't keep up with the young people in the village so much. And then changes you've noticed over time in the village? She hasn't been banks, here. <laughs> but you banked backwards and forwards. A lot of the farms have disappeared and have been filled in with modern constructions. So there's a lot of development in the village. Yeah. The school, when I was at school in Longcompton, didn't really get very good results and that has a fantastic reputation. Uh, the pub wasn't particularly good and now it must be the best or certainly one of the best in the area. Um, and there are a lot of young people. Lot, there are a lot more children around. Hmm. Not hugely, actually. I mean, the structure of the village, there have been a few new houses built, but very discreetly put in amongst the others. Um, the road is still quite busy, but I don't know whether it's any busier than it used to be when we first came here. It was lovely at the beginning of lockdown when all the traffic disappeared and you could walk down the middle of the um, main street um, and not get run over. So, um, how is it else? Has it changed? Well, one thing that has changed is that there are more children here now than mm. there were when we arrived, mm. which is absolutely wonderful. It's super to see so many children and the school so um, actively mm. used. Um, and I think that's partly because of the developments in Western Court, where you live, and uh, there are other families moving into various parts of the village, which again is really good. And I think that it, an important element of the village is maintaining a balance between young people and older people. Okay. What does it mean to you to be a villager? It means to be totally involved and enjoy the benefits of being included. It's nice to have a community. I know a lot of people, especially since I started with the parish council. You get to know a lot of people. There's lots of things going on to do. You get to do a lot of different stuff. Um, like, what do I do? Parish, I'm a parish councillor. There's the History Society, the choir, except that stopped at the moment. Um, there's all sorts of lovely things to get and do and meet people with. Um, to be part of a really lovely active community and that was another thing when I was looking to move here I didn't want to move somewhere where most of the houses were lived in by people at weekends only and I wanted to live somewhere where people actually lived full-time real people not kind of tourists and people who only lived here at certain times uh, and I thought well from the look of Long Compton and doing a tiny bit of research first they just looked like everyone here actually lived here full time and also the website I looked at beforehand where there were lots of village groups and like book clubs and lots of activities and it's really nice um, just living somewhere where people are really involved in village life. I think that's a key thing about a village that makes it different from a town or a city. A sense of community, once we noticed as soon as we moved here was that everyone's very friendly, very welcoming, very accommodating and they made us feel very much at home. Um, we don't think moving to a city or a town would have had the same uh, type of warmth uh, of welcome uh, and that's why one of the reasons why we particularly enjoy Long Compton. I think a lot has to do with the place. I think I very much appreciate the strong sense of place that there is here in Long Compton. That's to say how it looks, um, the people that were here before and what they used to do and the, how the history's marked the shape of the village, for example. And then, so I think you have to have an appreciation of your surroundings, perhaps. And to be a villager obviously means you like living in quite a small community and so you know each other perhaps or used to know who everybody is and perhaps a bit of their business and to me it just means being 
polite and helpful and nice to each other. Um, I love the community of being a villager, like everybody knows everyone around here. Um, even walking here today, I said hello to so many people, um, so I just love that everyone knows everyone. It's such a friendly atmosphere to live in a village, and yeah. A lot. I love it. <laughs> yeah. we're, I love we're it. just part of a friendly community, aren't we really? That's, uh, that, that's its attraction. More than anything else, I think that if you, if, if you are willing to become part of the village, you're very, very readily accepted. Well, I'm, 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 I'm very pleased to be a villager, and I'm great honoured to be a villager, and great, uh, and pleased to be in a, in a, in a great location, in a great village, and it's all I've known. So, um, and it's in nice surroundings, location, um, and just being part of uh, being, uh, I've been part of the village. Oh, it's a very important thing to be a villager. It's about knowing nice people, having everybody that helps and talks to you and that you can join in with all kinds of things in this village. You can go to things in the village hall, you can go to things in the school, you can go to things at the shop, you can go to the wreck. There's so many things to do here. Oh, that's quite a difficult question. Um, I think, um, I think being a villager is about trying to take part in as many things as you can that are local. I think it means looking out for other people um, and making sure everyone's okay. Um, you, we have lots of friends in the village, so um, I don't know what what makes a villager. What do you think makes a villager? I think just being active and joining into things. Yeah, I think that's quite important, isn't it? Kind, generous, looking after the village. Yeah, making sure the people around you are good. And, and in particular, looking out for the older people. I think that's really, really, and everybody else, but I think it's really, really important, especially if you've got people who perhaps haven't got family that look after them, so looking out for them as well. This is a vital update about coronavirus. The Prime Minister has announced the most drastic limits to our lives that the UK has ever seen in living memory. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. I urge you, at this moment of national emergency, to stay at home, protect our NHS and save lives. The appearance of COVID in the spring of 2020 affected the whole country. Long Compton was hit as much as everywhere else. According to government data, 250 people died in the district of which the village is a part, and around one person in 10 caught the virus. During lockdown, everything closed, and villagers' ability to travel was severely restricted. Would the community spirit which villagers had talked about be able to respond? Even though the many community groups ceased operations, they provided the basis for coordinated support networks, which quickly covered the whole village. Regular, socially distant street parties provided the opportunity for people to see, if not to touch, family and friends, and the village rapidly became a massive net exporter of food parcels to other local towns and villages. No one, however, was unaffected. Well, I think overall it's had rather a sad impact for a lot of people because it's made a lot of people frightened of interacting with each other. Well, we've, we've looked... Um Certainly look, looking after and overseeing other people um, within our street, it's quite a social street, it's East Street, and uh, there's uh, two or three elderly people that live there and one lady in particular, so I've been keeping an eye on her and we've been doing some shopping for her as and when she needs it. Um, but she's had other people helping her as well, so that's worked out quite well. Mm -hmm. And we've all just kept an eye on one another, and uh, when we see each other out and about or in the doorways, you know, we've said how are things going and we've knocked on doors, etc. So that's worked out quite well. Um, 
Our street actually put on some social distance street parties which were amazing in keeping everyone going. Um, everyone, I got to see my nan from a social distance space, um, so it was lovely coming together in a way that we wouldn't have done if lockdown and coronavirus wouldn't have happened, so I guess there's a silver lining there. I think during the lockdown everybody was a lot friend uh, well not a lot friendlier, but everybody met everybody else because on our daily walks you'd encounter people and because we didn't see many people you made the most of the opportunities that you did have so I think that's altered it. How it will alter it in the long term I think is yet to be decided. Um, it, lot, uh, coronavirus put an end to my uh, school year and I was even kicked out of my dorm, my student dorm. So I came here as kind of a place to go when you, when you get kicked out of your yes. student dorm. Um, so yeah, it's been really nice because I wouldn't want to spend lockdown anywhere else. This is the best place because there's so much space, um, things to do in a garden on the farm. A lot better than spending lockdown in an apartment where I'd be living. But I think the village really came together. The road that we live on, everyone was really friendly. And on the Thursday nights when we used to go outside and clap, we all, all used to stay outside, keeping our distance but have a nice little chat with each other, which was really nice. Yeah, I mean we've had um, lot, we've had information come through the door of how to stay safe um, and what the village is doing to support people if we need it, um, and just generally because it it is quite a close. Um, village, you do feel if you need, did need anything or need any help then we were able to get that support from people. Well we only moved to Long Compton in December just before the last lockdown but we were very happy to be in a friendly village especially one that was abiding by rules and we could go for walks in nice open spaces um, without the confines of a big city. Um, but the only positive through COVID myself, it, well, in fact, we haven't, you know, we've been okay health-wise, uh, yeah. um, but I've been really busy yeah. with work. Um, yeah. yeah, too busy really at times. Yeah, yeah um, so that hasn't that hasn't um, been negative at all. It's really positive on the, on that side. Yeah. yeah. During the lockdown, we used the catering company for the uh, Friday night fish and chips. Um, and my husband's actually work now works in one of the local units here. Um, so was able to, um, a lot of the villagers was really supportive in um, having his takeaways to support his business as well. So that was really kind and yeah. Village shop and um, getting parcels for everyone and was like the hub of the community. Um, it meant that we could all communicate with each other and figure out who the most vulnerable were and get shopping trips done for them. School was obviously brilliant in keeping, um, making sure that key workers children could still go in wherever possible uh, and doing all the remote learning which was which was obviously massively appreciated. Mm. The downside is a lot of the activities we got involved in like the walking group and craft group and many other things um, have all been put on hold uh, and it would be nice to see that getting up and going again. Mm. Today? Yes, definitely, yeah. yes. Yes, I think um, I think the village has come together very well actually yeah. during the pandemic. I mean, right at the very start, um, the villagers divided themselves up into geographic groups, and there was a leader on each group who coordinated um, help for anyone who was particularly vulnerable during that period. Lots of volunteers, so. Um, that was all organised very quickly and um, has worked very well as far as I know. Mm. And um, it, it hasn't, I don't think for us it's been too bad at all actually. Um, the travel restrictions, I was quite happy to put up with it for a, a month or so and then it started to get a bit difficult. Um, I still haven't been into Chipping Norton since lockdown was lifted I get all my groceries delivered and go into the village shop about once a month so um, it has meant a change in habits I didn't mind it but I would like to think that it wasn't going to last forever <laughs> what is your favorite place in Long Compton and why what's my favorite place I think that's a shop 
because everybody there is so helpful and they talk to me. Gosh, that's really hard, isn't it? Because I'm tempted to say the pub, but I spent so much time there that it can't really be anywhere else, can it? I think the big walks that I do with the dog, probably my favourite, because that's me getting away from the pub. Um, and there's the dragonfly walks that go around the village, and me and Bella run those quite a bit together. So that's probably my favourite part. But if it wasn't for that bit, then I'd have to say it's probably the pub. Because I spend all of my working life there, and um, I spend a fair bit of my social time there as well. You're sat in it because you've got a big garden and the gorgeous views. We can see halfway to Broadway over there. <laughs> we can see the church and the Royal Oak Stones that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Where we live. Luckiest people in the village, I think we are. <laughs> no, I love it. Um, my house and garden in Crockle Street because it's got a lovely view which is uninterrupted apart from the church and it's quiet and private and it's just always had a very nice atmosphere for me it just was the thing that attracted me to Longcompton and the village the house was all that atmosphere in that one house really um, I would say most probably the school one because I'm a teacher so I like that environment also, I like to hear from our house at lunchtime all the children playing at lunchtime so I can hear you all running around. Uh, I love the church. Um, I've been going to church for a, a few years now and I just love the building. I love the history behind the building, the, lit, the lynch gate and everything. Um, I just think it's beautiful around there. Um, possibly the church, but I'd also include the village hall and the woods and uh, all, all the lovely buildings and just the whole idea that it's a complete village with a school and a church and a shop. Um, we particularly like the, the two churches, the Anglican Church and the Congregational Church, and uh, we would be attenders of both. Um, we also like the Red Lion for meal and for socialising, so uh, we're very fortunate at Long Compton that we have all those three locations and of course the village shop which is wonderful. Uh, I don't know what we would do without Colin and the ladies in this excellent shop. My allotment, because it's peaceful. I suppose I said when obviously I was that generation where I was sort of out playing in the evening, so I suppose say the recreational ground, it was a place where everyone congregated and they sort of hung around the streets. But then again, also, uh, well, almost like my faith, what my dad said as well, um, being at home as well, being right. safe at home. Home, obviously, I've always been there, grown up there, and a lot of things have happened there, so yeah, sort of just a general village, but also at home as well favourite part of it was one thing would be the Phoebe's Field, the recreational ground, because it's a really social place. I mean, we have a dog, so we go there and walk the dog twice a day, and we meet lots of friends and other villagers there, and there are lovely views from, from the rec. Um, so, yeah, I think the rec for me. Do you attend any village events or clubs? How important are these to village life? Well, we're both involved in several different groups within the mm. village, aren't we? Um, we do the walking group, that's once a month. I do um, belong to a craft group, we usually meet up once a month. Um, I also belong to book club, which is once a month. <laughs> um, and we do um, support the village hall when they have um, functions on. We've been to lots of do's there, haven't mm. we? And enjoyed those. And then there's um, events on uh, with the friends of the church to raise money for the church. Lovely um, music concerts and things. And we've been to lots of those. Yeah. And I've been in, I've been part of the friends of the church, uh, trying to put events on to raise money to maintain the building which is a beautiful right, one listed church, so we need to keep that going. Um, and I've recently joined the parish council to help out with um, the things that they do in the running of the village. Um, 
yeah, so yeah, we're, we're pretty Quite active. Yeah. <laughs> um, recently I haven't because I've been at university for the past two years, um, but I've always been to the village fairs, the um, primary school fairs, um, I remember there used to be sports days down the park and everything, so whenever I can, whenever I'm at home, I would always try and attend the events, yes. Uh, yes, yes, um, I uh, heavily involved with the chapel through more through accident than design uh, and um, of course we do various clubs or did before lockdown uh, do various clubs there so you know we had a scrabble club and, and whist because uh, I'm not necessarily terribly good at whist but I do quite enjoy it um, and anything that goes on at the village hall I try to attend if I'm free. Oh they're very important yes yes we well as I said belonged to the History Society for, well, I think it was the first thing I joined after we moved here, which was probably about three months after I moved, we moved here, joined that. Um, we support virtually all the Friends of the Church concerts, um, fundraising events, um, the walking group, um, which somehow along the way um, I got landed on leading the walking group which we've been doing for, since 2008 so that's another 12 years to a village organisation. I like my wife have been involved also in the walking group um, I attend the uh, history uh, society meetings but uh, I don't get involved in them um, but more recently having stood down from the parish council I actually joined the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Railway, which is about 15 miles from here, where I look after aspects of um, maintain, maintaining the locomotives. Not now, because I'm too old, but I used to be on what's called the Parish Council, which is the meeting place for all the villagers. I say about events, um, so I attend things at the village hall when I, when I can. Um, yearly fates, um, I support those. Obviously, that's hopefully everyone gets together. So yeah, sort of fates, fates and events. So how important are these to village life? I think though those sort of events, uh, traditional events, if they can keep going, are quite important because they're always big years ago. Um, Say it's just different eras. I mean, I, I, I say I always put like now and always keep comparing it with ones in the past. Um, but they are still important to carry on with, regardless who runs them or who's around, I suppose, because otherwise I think the village would be, would be dead otherwise. Yeah. There's the History Society and the choir, but I usually go to anything that's on I, at the village hall, I go to Lowe's. Yes, yes. Gardening? History? History? Comptonians, of course. Comptonians. The, 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 the Social church. Saturday. Church. Church regularly. Yeah. Uh, lots of things in the village, yes. Needlework. And needlework, of well, course. She runs it. Of course, no. I run the knitting group, yeah. not the needlework. That's Christina. Bless her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Christina is the needlework. You, you run Lady, the, you run the knitting. Group I run the group. knitting group for charity, but not. Uh, I, How important are these to village life? I would say they're essential. Yes, but very it's what important. Brings people together, isn't it? I think some, particularly when people get left on their own. And you, you, you notice it really when we, when we're in, in a situation that we are now with this, with this virus, because I mean we've because we're. We're, we're very in a very vulnerable position because we're up, we're old, you know, 90s, and we've both got diseases which would succumb very easily to, to this virus. Uh, and Warwickshire County Council, they, they contact us and put us on the list, do we want this, do we want that, but we haven't needed anything. It's all in the village, you know. That's true, actually. Yeah, it's a family as well, but you know, a lot of it is the village. What are your hopes and dreams for the village in the future? Like any changes that you would like to happen? Well, for me, um, I like the village, the way the village feels. So I wouldn't like to see that change a great deal. And I see some of the 
the threats that would cause that would be overdevelopment. Uh, so I'd like to see um, encourage more young people into the village, keep the diversity of age uh, and activities in the village. I like the small businesses that we have in the village as well, mm -hmm. and I'd like to encourage more of them along. Yes. Hmm? That, firstly, that the village shop will always continue in uh, trading. Um, sadly, we know that many villages, the shops have had to close. We would hope that would not happen to uh, Carty and Empson or whoever it might be uh, at that time. Uh, we would hope the pub would always be able to trade. Again, we know the many thousands of pubs which have closed in villages like ours. Um, hopefully that would not happen here. So uh, I would really like to see more of the same. I hope it doesn't grow too much more. Um, but I hope we get a nice mix of, because it's quite an elderly population, me included, um, but it's nice if young people can stay in the village and join things and do things so that we don't kind of die off, basically. Hopes and dreams of the village. Um, yeah. Um, well, my hopes are that there's no more house building. And that's been a bit of a pet hate in recent years because the way the village got bigger and, and then the houses have been built in areas which are formerly green and not necessarily villagers buying them as such, traditional villagers and so I'm hoping that will make may come to an end. Um, so really as villages now I suppose is about as, as much as I want it to get um, size wise. Um, but again the, the kids hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll stay and um, you know find work and continue being here. Um, um, I'd love more people to know about the village and appreciate the village as it is. Um, yeah, I just think more people should know about how beautiful and Compton is. Oh, that we are able, once we're allowed, to have further um, events where we can get together, meet new people, um, possibly like um, Mary said, that we can have the new housing with more families arriving so you have more friends to play with. I suppose that I don't want it to become a, uh, a dormitory village. I want it to remain as it is a vibrant place on its own, not just somewhere where people try to escape from the town life and expect to go to the countryside and it's sunny all day and they can't smell the signage. We want people who as long as it, we, want, we want to attract people who want to live in the village, if we can do that, we can survive. And to be part of the village, yeah. to join in things in the village, you know. Yeah. Terribly important, I think, really. I want it to stay friendly and helpful. I want it to go on having a good shop. I want it to go on having a good village hall. And I want it, actually, to go on having a good pub. Is there anything you'd like to change to the village? Ooh, what would I change? I'd like to slow the traffic down on Main Street. Definitely. I think that would be really quite nice. So if we could have, um, I don't know how we would do it, either speed camera or um, whether there's, you know, a bit more of an official crossing for people so it's a little bit safer. But yeah, I do think that would be really, really nice. But I love the fact that we have no street lights. I think that's great, even though lots of people want to change that. I don't, I think that's really nice. I think, generally speaking, we've got a really, really great village. I think between the fact that we've got the church and the village hall and the shop and the pub, I think it's those things really that, that allow us to have the village that we've got.
be careful how you behave in the village, really, because it all goes to the knitting club in the end. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> nice lot. I'd live close to it, dear. <laughs> I like that. Finish on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's a good point. Yeah, we're going to put that in for sure.